think there's anything more creative than to take an entire like landscape water up and envision a new town, uh, a whole place from the ground up. It's exhilarating. There's nothing like it. This was a story of grinding, dreaming it as one thing and doing it as another. Wildlife's a vision for a master plan community, uh, a mix of uses uh, over a big, big area. It started because there was a business purpose. We created this premise that said, if, if we take lead over planning, over markets, over land use entitlements, over infrastructure, we can yield more value than some other strategy. I would say equally important and simultaneously, there was a community purpose. This company, you know, almost 100 years old, has always been stewards over large environmental landscapes right around the country, around the world. And so there's an ethic and a responsibility for how you manage those things. We brought that same spirit to community development. And we said, you know, look, we have an opportunity to, to create a higher standard, to be a model for others to emulate and, and do it in a way that really does give back to the community. So why start here? One is because of the market potential and, and the other was because of the scale of our holdings here. We knew that if we started here, you know, we had the potential to create value over that landscape for a long, long period of time. There's power in community, right? I mean, incredible power. You focus on education and you realize if you do your community right, you're gonna create a learning place where people actually learn because they lived in this place in a way that would be different if they lived somewhere else. I could do the same thing around uh, health and community, uh, technology, environment, outdoor recreation, uh, friends, clubs, activities, all those things that create rich life. You can make a difference in people's lives if you create the place right and, and create an environment where all those things just flourish. That's what's happening here and that's what makes me tick for sure. guy has hit the stage. <laughs> That's how you create value in real estate. So if you're one of the only people sitting in a room in New York that hasn't bought real estate in Florida yet, come see me after the show. That's wild light. I checked. It's 70 degrees there. It's sunny right now. Um, you can live 15 miles from the beach and 15 miles from an international airport. Come see me after the show, okay? Um, but look, there's just no better way to convey the progress we've made than by seeing it. And by, by progress, I'm not just talking about the project, I'm talking about the business. I've spent the better part of the last 10 years uh, creating and refining a strategy uh, for real estate development at Rayonier and building a team with the capabilities and the ex expertise to uh, execute and to do it in a reliable way at a very high level. And the results speak for themselves. I could be more proud of this team, I'm more excited about the future, We've built a platform and now we're gonna scale it. Pretty simple formula. Really well positioned land holdings, large in the path of growth, valuable, getting more valuable. And now we have the proven capability, as you heard from both Dave and Mark, because of the work we've done over the past few years to execute and to do it in a very reliable way. That's a winning formula, just those two things. But what's really gonna make a difference is in our approach in the responsible way that we do this. Creating inspirational places is now fully embedded in the vision of Rayonier. And we're gonna do this in a way that adds more market premiums because I've learned from experience that when I came to Rayonier, I had over 25 years experience working on similar assets, converting agriculture, timberland to higher performing places. All of those now are earning market premiums. They earn better market share. It's where people live, work and play and thrive. When you do that, you make more money. You also make better places, better communities, win support in communities, which is really vital uh, for going and going for a long, long time. There's one core business on the left. I like to call the one on the right the other core business. That's the Chris core business. Uh, the growth business, as Mark said, that's what I'm talking about uh, today. So it's important to understand where we play on the real estate development value chain. This is a simple illustration of what it takes to develop real estate uh, from an undeveloped property 
to, a, uh, to an actual community. So undeveloped land to the left, vertical development to the right. As you go left to right, time, complexity, capital investment, risk goes up, and so does value. Uh, how you manage in each one of those steps is very different. Very technical, uh, very political, requires selling a vision. Unde uh, in the undeveloped uh, bucket there, that's rigor, that's analysis. You gotta understand that you've got a market and you've got a program that can serve it before you step into the next box, which is entitlements, where you go in front of local governments and ask for an approval. You're saying, can you take this timberland and put development on it? And then they gotta face uh, 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 elections uh, for the decisions that they make. You're selling a vision, you're, you're committing to them that you can do something that makes the community better. That's politics, it's also regulatory because you win your permits here, highly technical, complying with codes, regulations. When you get those approvals, you've got, a, you've got an opportunity and those entitlements are really, really valuable and they can, um, they can take you a long, long way. The next step is horizontal development. This is another set of rigorous steps, civil engineering, uh, uh, planning analysis across a landscape really making sure that when you invest capital, you get it returned, you make money on it. It's, a, it's about project management, discipline along a continuum, testing, retesting, bidding, rebidding, redesigning, until you get in that budget, you know you can move all the way. And then vertical development, buildings off to the right. The point of going through all of this is to say, our sweet spot is uh, right there in the middle. Uh, we aim to deliver an entitled pot of real estate uh, uh, within an inspired master plan that's been served by master infrastructure, horizontal infrastructure. By pod, I mean it's still undeveloped. So the buyer comes in and finishes the uh, landscape, the development, horizontal infrastructure, and builds buildings, homes, uh, et cetera, within that pod. This place on the continuum for us, we believe, uh, is, um, is the best for us in terms of our risk profile. It's more capital light but we can get a really big premium and a really big return when we uh, execute this way. Um, because you, you deliver a buyer an entitled pod that's ready to go with infrastructure, they'll pay you a big financial premium for that. So look, we've learned from experience and we've applied lessons here in a really methodical way. Uh, we knew that uh, our industry didn't have a great uh, uh, track record, honestly, in executing in real estate development. So uh, along every step of this process, we've been very, very careful, you know, to make sure that we've applied lessons learned, learning from those mistakes. And look, it's about some things that may sound real simple, but sometimes, look honestly, it gets missed. And I think it's because in our industry, sometimes the folks just hadn't taken the time uh, to uh, inbound the expertise, but the experience required to execute. No disparaging a forester, but you know, they know a lot about silviculture and forestry and really important things, but maybe not real estate. I promise I can't run Doug's business. If you ever see that happening, do something. <laughs> I can't do that, um, but I can do this. And, um, and so the first bit is uh, uh, then about the right experience. The other is keeping capital return uh, in sync with capital investment. And I think what happens a lot of times is people make mistakes, you get big appetites. These are raw tracks. You can get a lot of capital in the ground before the return starts. You gotta be really, really careful there. And so it's about discipline, knowing you've got a market, knowing when you put it out there that you're gonna have a buyer, you're gonna have a buyer quickly. You're gonna apply that experience. We have more than 25 years average experience across our team. We inbounded a very deep set of experienced uh, professionals across a broad range of capabilities on this team. And I mentioned rigor, it's just always analysis, 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 every step of the way, looking and relooking back and forth, financial, technical, all those things along the continuum. And at the end of the day, what really drives you is trust because you've got, we've got to have uh, the, the trust of the local governments we serve, of the markets we serve, of our buyers, home builders and developers and always maintaining those relationships and that credibility, really, really important. So that headline is a true statement. Um, this really is a unique and uh, a competitive advantage for Rainier, the market position, our scale, our reputation, our strong capabilities. So here's the size of the opportunity. Uh, the, the, this is 120,000 acres. I gotta stop for a minute. 
It's 120,000 acres for a real estate development platform in Florida and Georgia, and then a smaller but really valuable set of assets out in the Pacific Northwest. That's an incredible platform for a real estate development company. I mentioned my experience. I've worked across Florida, Tampa Bay, Central Florida, Northwest Florida, across the Americas on many projects. This is an amazing set of assets for a real estate development company. Um, and so one of the things to know about this picture is it's activated, meaning it's not just a blob of acres. Hey, here's some acres with real estate development potential. Every, and Dave mentioned this, everything within this, um, uh, within this table has some kind of uh, project against it. It's a, it's a set of projects. Some are further along in the pipeline. You know, they may be in development or in an entitlements process. Others are in analysis, but everything we've got here is activated. It's got attention on it. We're setting it up uh, for the market in the future. So drilling into our most significant opportunities, this is Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia. Not a mistake that these are the most significant opportunities. It's where they're located. If you haven't checked, Florida is growing rapidly. 1,500 people a day uh, by most measures. Um, Southeast Georgia, not too far behind. There is, this is, um, uh, looking at the map, it's 300 miles from the Orlando, Orlando International Airport in Central Florida, probably most people know where that is, up to the Hilton Head Savannah International Airport up to the north on this map. Everything on red there is land owned by Ray and here. Most of the people in this area, they live within 15 miles of the coast and 15 miles of, of an interstate. That's Interstate 95. Look at where our land holdings are vis-a-vis -vis those metro areas, that coast, that interstate, significant opportunity. And it's only growing um, over time. One of the other things to know about this is, um, is scarcity. I've lost track of how many people have come to me wanting to buy a big raw chunk of land for the wrong value. Just, um, uh, it's just, uh, there's, land has just gotten more scarce and the competition for it has gotten more fierce. And a lot of the land along this, these areas already, is already in public hands. It's owned by the federal, state government, local governments, been conserved, some of its water, lakes, rivers, streams. There are not many large tracts of land left for development and that makes it even that much more valuable. Last slide on the portfolio and the potential and I call this pace, okay? The pace of growth and also the path, the path of growth. We benefit from both of those things. Pace, the bars off to the top there. Um, uh, Jacksonville, by these measures, is the sixth fastest growing. Savannah metro area, the ninth fastest growing. Uh, markets by population growth, that's 2020 to 2022. For a measure of the national growth rates, about 0.4%. This is population. Those are very fast growing markets, okay? And what's happened is they've grown, they're growing even more faster now than before COVID. Two trends, I think, are, are driving that. One is work from home. It's here to stay. You can work anywhere you wanna work. You wanna work here, uh, near the beach, great climate. And in the technology and the, uh, the um, willingness of employers uh, is here to stay my view. It's driving a lot of migration to the south. The other one are the baby boomers. 65% of all baby boomers have now hit retirement age. Baby boomers retire to the south in big numbers, and that's just beginning. So put the boomers together with that, with that trend, the climate, the quality of life, the jobs in the south. We've, we've just begun to see the growth here uh, that we expect to, um, to uh, grow for a long, long time. Let me talk about PATH for a minute. On wild bite, what's happened over the years for 30, 40 years is I've been watching that market. Growth uh, in Northeast Florida has gone south of Jacksonville. So it starts at the beach and it can't grow into the ocean. <laughs> starts at the beach, it comes inland, downtown into the south of Jacksonville. If you know that area, that's been some of the fastest growing real estate in Florida for a long, long time. So what happens when things grow fast? It gets congested, the roads are busy, the schools are overcrowded, housing prices go up the markets start to look for more opportunity and it's come looking. And one of the reasons we put the wildlife project out there is because our qualitative or quantitative, our quantitative research, our ear to the ground uh, believe this was to be true, the market was coming north of Jacksonville. Where as Mark said, within 10 miles of that, that green on the map, 
is the first phase of wildlife. We own over 50,000 acres. So now wildlife's pulling the market. It, it was, the, the market was pushing in our direction. Now we're pulling it and that's really turning on the velocity. Same story in Savannah. Okay, Savannah and Hilton Head have grown together. They ran out of room to grow. They started going south. If you know that area around Pooler, if you ever drive I-95 through there, that's where the traffic stops. <laughs> That's where, that's where it, it, it gets slow because there's so much development in that area and it's pushed it in our direction, which is Bryan County, Georgia. It's um, a Richmond Hill. We own 20,000 acres within that 10 mile ring of where Hartwood is. Uh, this is also a market that's got a lot of organic growth because the state and the local uh, governments there have been so strong on economic development. The port of uh, Savannah is the largest, fastest growing container port in America. It's responsible for one out of every 10 jobs in this market. And I'll show you when we talk about Hartwood, we've got a very successful industrial project there as a result of that really, really strong market. So this is Wildlight. You saw a video. Um, it's up and out of the ground, um, past that startup phase, performing really well earning market premiums. Uh, we've been really pleased uh, by, the, by the response uh, in the market, uh, really pleased by how it's impacting the community. It's attracted significant capital. So when you look, when you, when you see the video, there's a lot of buildings in that video. We built one building. We built an office building for Rainier, which was a really good move, by the way, because it told the market they're here to stay. It got us a lot of market credibility. All those other buildings, four, four multifamily uh, projects, uh, single family homes, UF Health at University of Florida, but two uh, pieces of hospital uh, campus here, uh, two schools, one private, one public, groceries, dining, restaurants, all that stuff came because they believed in our vision. And they said, yep, we think you're right. This is gonna go. And it's been really uh, gratifying and successful. Now, some of those buyers are coming back for more, certainly the home builders and other developers too, and we've been able to bring some of them even up to the Hartwood project that say, we like the way you guys do this, we wanna be with you at that project as well. We've got a really significant sales pipeline now and a really proven concept. And so here's the best news of all. Um, so Dave mentioned this, we've got um, a big entitlement approval last year that will, will allow us to grow uh, up to uh, 15,000 uh, more residential units, more non-residential here, uh, over about 15,000 acres. On the map, phase one's a little less than 3,000 acres. Um, there's a couple of thousand homes there, some built, some under construction uh, that we've sold, um, and, um, and the market's wanting more. Um, that goes to phase two, five times the footprint it's a, it's a plan that really sets up well for our sweet spot. Uh, so what'll happen through that phase two, there'll be a, a new major uh, uh, road that, that runs through it. It's gonna be built by the special district that sits over wildlife that has the authority to sell tax-free bonds and build infrastructure and pay it back by the residences that come into the community. So. There'll be a, a road built by the district and we'll sell pods to home builders off of it. And, um, and we, one, of the, one of the things about the way we structure our, our home builder uh, 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 transactions, and this has been something we've earned uh, through the credibility of the project and the market, is we get paid two ways. One on the front end when, when the lot closes and then on the back end when the home sales. So we get paid a percentage of the final home sales price. So when the, when the builder does better, we, uh, uh, get to participate in that as well. So the, the performance of the project, uh, really strong. Um, uh, we're excited about launching this. We're gonna, we're gonna be under construction here before mid-year. Um, uh, we, we, you know, everything we do, and Mark mentioned this, the reason we do it is because of all the rest of that land we own around it. Uh, every time we invest here, every time we, you know, someone else invests capital, we just spread that halo value over the rest of that uh, land. And um, you know it creates optionality uh, value for the business for a long, long time. This is Hartwood, similar to Wildlight. We replicated the model. We extended our capabilities here. This is about uh, 90 uh, miles up Interstate 95, a completely different market, uh, like Wildlight, exceeding our expectations. The, the market response has been tremendous. 
Uh, it's transforming the asset values there and uh, the community that has received this in a really, really a heartfelt, compelling way. And it's attracted significant capital as well. Um, we've got three multifamily rental projects uh, under construction here. More than a thousand homes of land uh, for that many units has been sold. Um, uh, we've got uh, a K-12 school campus here, one of the largest in the state of Georgia, that'll have over 7,500 students on it, integrated right in to, uh, to, um, to Hartwood. When people, want, when people want to live in a community, they want to make sure there's a great school there. We've got a, a really great school here. Uh, last Friday, I was at the opening of the first phase of the healthcare campus here, like University of Florida and Wildlife. We replicated that model created a partnership with the longest serving hospital in the region, St. Joseph Candler. They opened their first phase on Friday. That's all their capital, okay, uh, creating this place. And then there's the industrial side of this uh, project, which is extraordinary. Um, I mentioned the port, uh, the, the, how this market thrives in that regard. Um, we, we sold since the interchange uh, opened here, which was a major catalyst uh, for Hartwood, the interchange on Interstate 95, a new interchange opened in, um, in 2021. Since that time, we sold a uh, 1,000 acres or so for industrial uses. It'll support over 10 million square feet of non-residential use. There's about 5 million square feet built with um, uh, big logistics centers like uh, for companies like Medline, Altaberg, Volvo, and Hyundai is under construction on a manufacturing facility here that'll open this year and employ uh, about 1,500 people. Those are jobs. They need houses. They go to grocery stores. That's how you create value in real estate. So like Wildlight, significant part of our growth strategy when you look at our EBITDA targets uh, will come uh, from Hartwood. So here's the Pacific Northwest um, uh, acquired as part of Pope. Um, really interesting because uh, 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 not too dissimilar from the landscape in the Southeast, but even more so, uh, Land and private ownership, uh, at lar larger chunks of it, are really rare out here. You know, it's um, uh, uh, there just isn't much of it. This is Kitsap County, North Kitsap, north of Bainbridge Island. It's an easy commute um, to Seattle uh, with the ferry uh, systems here. Beautiful property, scenic, uh, mountain views, water views. When the when the sun's shining in Seattle, it's a little different than Florida. Um, we'll have strong market demand for these properties, and we can. Uh, uh, you know, we can extend our expertise here, and we have, and optimize these opportunities. Let me talk for a minute about unimproved development. Uh, unimproved development, as Mark mentioned, um, uh, means that we're selling land after receipt of entitlements, but short of investment in horizontal infrastructure. This works best for us when we have land with development potential that we don't own land around it. So the best strategy for us is to monetize it. Um, back to the prior page, that look at the key transactions. We, we can earn uh, significant premiums to the alternatives uh, with this strategy. That uh, uh, sale in Kitsap County on one of those uh, Pacific Northwest properties uh, at uh, over $110,000 an acre, that's to national home builders. Uh, we got the entitlements. We thought we were going to have to uh, develop lots and invest capital, develop lots to sell this property. But during the process, the demand was so high, we sold it uh, before and got a really, really great return. So when you secure entitlements, when you, in some cases, when you help solve for infrastructure, you, you create opportunity to, to, to uh, earn these type of premiums when the properties are, you know, when there's market demand in a very capital light way. Um, so, here's what we are prepared to deliver. Um, from zero to meaningful, uh, to a meaningful contributor of growth uh, for Rainier. I call that uh, 2016 to 2020 uh, uh, timeframe um, uh, startup. And we're in the ramp up phase now. So we've returned our capital, cash is flowing, uh, we're we're uh, earning uh, good returns on the investments we made. We've shifted our model to the pod sales, more capital light. We've earned that uh, in the market, and we're making uh, uh, good money here. And, and this is where we're headed off to the right, um, to the uh, 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 40 million uh, average adjusted uh, EBITDA 
uh, by 2030. Uh, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to we're going to develop phase two of wild light, as I mentioned before, five times larger, quite significant. A, a lot of this growth is going to come from wild light. We're going to accelerate opportunities at Hartwood, as turning on the Hartwood uh, project um, uh, uh, and uh, continuing to grow it uh, will drive a lot of that um, uh, EBITDA in the coming years. We're going to activate additional properties. Uh, I think there's at least one, maybe two uh, portfolios uh, on the scale of a wild light uh, or hardwood uh, in, our, in our markets. Um, so we're going to be working with local governments to entitle to uh, prepare uh, other land uh, to come to the market as well. And we're going to grow our entitlements pipeline. Uh, every time, like I said, we secure entitlements, uh, we create the opportunity for value. We're going we're to grow that unimproved development business on certain assets with development potential where we can really bring the cash register, you know, when we secure entitlements. So um, Mark talked about uh, our relentless focus on optimizing and unlocking value uh, from our land portfolio. Uh, that's our focus. And um, I think of it in two ways. There's, there's a lot of moving parts in development. Sometimes it helps to get real laser-like. And when I think about the value we're creating, I think of two things. One is, the premiums we generate. Mark's always said it's all about the premium, uh, the premium to, to timberland, the premium to alternatives. So one way to think about is that last uh, bullet there, where we're realizing bare land values of, of $25,000 $25, in greater uh, per gross acre net of capital investment. So financial premiums, significant so uh, to the alternatives. And secondly, the increased asset value. It's that every move we make, every time someone else invests in our project, they put capital in, that value ripples across thousands of acres. I call it a halo effect. Um, that halo is a huge part of how we create value in real estate development as well. So I'll close with the message I opened with. Uh, we've got that formula now, uh, well-positioned land holdings, large, valuable, getting more valuable, um, the proven capability to execute, and um, the, the real way we'll add value is by, the, by our approach, doing this in a responsible way, earning greater market premiums, maintaining that trust, creating that runway to do this business for a long, long time in a reliable and successful way. Thank you.